This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Did you know you can print with a material that dissolves in water? I actually learned this fairly recently because you need a printer that supports multiple filaments, which I didn't have. Just in case you're joining me without any 3D printing experience, I want to go over what a support is, the different materials you can print supports with. One material I'll continue to use because I'm lazy. Another I actually expect it to love, but after this video, I'm just going to throw it away. And finally, our water soluble material I'll be using for all my complex prints. I mean that too. Check out this Hilbert cube. It's a complex structure that you have no chance to print without supports. And if you're familiar with supports, you'll notice how clean the inside was, considering there's almost no room to work in there. So let's talk about these results. But first, what is a support and why do we need these things anyway? Well, a support is a thin structure added to the model to support overhangs. This could be an aggressive wall angle or a bridge. As a printer tries to stretch the filament over these gaps, it can only go so far before you need to prop it up with a support. These support the filament meant for your model, which would otherwise fall due to gravity. The printer manual is going to tell you what angle and bridge length your printer can print without a support. For example, my Bamboo Labs P1S says I need supports on angles steeper than 55 degrees or bridges longer than 30 millimeters. I think that's optimistic compared to the general community seeming to agree on about 45 degrees and 10 millimeter bridges. So we're going to test it. Regardless of results, I want to add more supports than necessary since I want a quality finished product with as little stringing as possible. Any competent slicer can add these supports automatically, and I recommend you let the slicer do just that. But you can also add them manually if you know what you're doing. I personally just let it auto-generate because I assume the developers of the slicer are smarter than I am, and so far I haven't been proven wrong. I printed a test model for supports. I start to get issues at about 65 degrees, so I bet I can get away with about 60. I'm going to stick with 45 though because you can see the quality improves the less angle you have. The bridges all have stringing on them, although even the largest one, an 80 millimeter bridge, only looks a tiny bit worse since all bridges have significant stringing. It feels very brittle too, like the strings aren't fused together. Well, because they aren't. So for the best print, I'll step down to 45 degrees on the slopes and 10 millimeters on bridges, just like the majority of the community recommends in my experience. Did you know that there are dozens of support designs? We're just gonna focus on the major two, which are lattice, and trees. A lattice is a series of thin vertical pillars under the area that needs supporting. These can be more difficult to remove than trees, but ultimately should be more fragile than the model itself. You still need to be very careful though, as I've broken many prints trying to remove these supports. While more fragile than the model, they still aren't as fragile as they may seem. On the other hand, trees are easier to remove and, well, look like a tree. The trunk grows from a more reachable part of the model, like ideally the base, and grows upwards to where you need the support. Trees will be easier to remove because they're hollow inside, so they're far less durable. This can be good in that they are legitimately easier to remove, but this can be bad in that it might be brittle enough to leave the ends attached to the model, requiring extra work to remove them. Ultimately, I find trees less effort to remove on curved and organic objects, while lattices are just as easy and provide better support on objects with primarily flat surfaces. It's going to be personal preference. You should try some of these prints too, which I have linked in the description below. Adding support means your print is much more likely to be successful. Without supports, you'll get a lot of stringing and drooping, which is probably not what you wanted. For example, let's look at a model from a past video where I tried to extend the domino tray in a halfback domino robot. While each separate part can be rotated to print without supports, you don't get the luxury when you want to combine them and print in one piece. Even with the most optimal rotation to print, we still end up with a ton of overhangs that need supports and in a lot of small areas too. To get the best print and the best support, make sure your printer is calibrated, whether that is manually or using an included process. Once you've done that, then let's first try with the same PLA you're printing your model with, which is what you're gonna do if your printer doesn't support changing filaments anyway. Before we start, now is a good time to tell you about PCBWay. If you need custom PCBs, CNC machining, or 3D printing, then PCBWay can help you out. They can take any size project, even small projects, and turn your ideas into something that can be shipped to your door. Check them out with a link in the description below. Well, wait, what is PLA? Well, it's called polylactic acid, which was discovered in 1845 and patented by DuPont in 1954. It's a plastic that starts by fermenting sugars from plant-based material like corn and sugarcane to make lactic acid, which is then polymerized into granulated plastic which is then formed into 1.75 millimeter filament. I'm no chemist, that career path in high school and my motto was C's get degrees, but I'm told polymerization is a way to combine molecules into a larger molecule chain. If you've seen PLA+, plus, well, that's just PLA with additives to increase its strength. Of course, there's a lot more to it than that, 
but PLA Plus is marketed as twice as tough, which has been shown to be true. Primarily, it's more flexible, meaning it'll deform under pressure instead of cracking, that is, until you hit its limit like with any other material. You'll find PLA used in a ton of industries like knit and woven PLA and textiles, medicine where rapid prototyping has value, for example, basic metal equipment, personal protective equipment, especially since 2020, and prosthetics. You'll also find PLA used in containers like deli containers that you'd put soups or dips in. Keep in mind, anything you print will not be food safe. While the plastic itself might be food safe, your printer prints in a way that leaves tiny imperfections, which will grow mold, and you are unlikely to clean properly and of course if you use the heat of a dishwasher you're going to destroy your print anyway. With each material I printed a few support test objects, two unique objects, and each object was printed with both lattice and tree supports. Like I said before you need to be careful so you don't damage the object when removing your supports because you'll end up with rough surfaces or breaking small parts of your model. Okay, so removing these supports took some effort and now you're being sold an idea that there is a dedicated PLA support material that will solve all your problems. So what is dedicated PLA support material? Well, the community thinks a lot of this type of material is PETG since it has common printing specifications. The day sheet for this Bamboo Labs PLA support says it's actually PLA and not PETG. I don't see a lot of details and the things I've seen in the community lead it to speculation. So that is all I got for you. It does advertise that the formula was modified to minimize fusion because of polarity, whatever that means. Ideally, that means that you can pull away the support with less effort than it takes than not using it. So let's try some prints. This is the material I'm throwing away. I hate it. You can see it. It mildly succeeds in being weaker than the model, but on the interface between the support and model, it sticks and I can't get it off. Sure, I can with some time and effort, but the point of this was to save time and effort, so it failed. I really do feel strongly about this too, as you can see in a previous video. It took more effort to remove the small areas of this model, and I just gave up entirely on that piece. It wasn't just one print either. It was every print I used this stuff in. Sure, an X-Acto knife would have helped, but I'm not willing to go to the hospital for you. Sorry. What did work and what dissolves in water, and I loved, is PVA. But first, there's another PVA, polyvinyl acetate, which is used in like wood glue. So keep that in mind as you go shopping. But this is polyvinyl alcohol. Don't drink it either. Actual advice. Compared to PLA, it's soft, it's biodegradable, and you should absolutely not print your entire model with it. It will completely dissolve in water. PVA is also widely used in different applications outside of 3D printing, like dishwashing pods. The outer layer dissolves in water during the washing cycle, which releases the soap inside. Similar idea here, but we're dissolving away the supports instead. When you print supports with PVA, you will usually get a smoother finish since you are not pulling or scraping the model. PVA is also popular because if you can print PLA, then you can print PVA. The temperature and the nozzle have very similar requirements, but you'll need a printer that can print with multiple filaments. PVA is hard on your printer, so you can see that it's, well, goopy, causing issues switching filaments. It's a messy print. Once you're done printing, you'll take it, let it soak in water. I found about 30 minutes, and you can pull the supports away. But it'll take a few hours to completely dissolve. In fact, I let mine sit overnight. Rinse it out, let it dry. Our test models here need no work other than the goop that needed wiped off. The real test here was that Hilbert cube. Due to how intricate this model is, there's no way you're printing supports in PLA and removing them without damaging the model. I'd even be surprised if you could get them all because the support area inside is greater than any gap you have to remove it around the model and much less use the force to actually remove it. I decided to try saving myself some money here by printing PVA between the support structure and the model, which is commonly called the interface. Toss it in some water, let it sit for a while, and hopefully the PLA supports inside will be super easy to remove. So I'm printing PLA when I'm lazy, throwing away the PLA support material, and using PVA all the time. 